<laughs> hey everybody, I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips. Welcome to Clay Shares Live at 5. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. I come to you live from my studio or somewhere else and give you a little demo or tutorial or Q&A session and tonight we are going to be glazing with Mako glazes. I've got a bunch of bisque ware here, a bunch of Mako glazes here, a whole bunch of finished pieces to show you as some crazy good examples of what you can get for glazing. And I have my super secret glaze combination notebook right here with a page that I just put in. I've been working on for the last few days some awesome glaze combos that I've been wanting to try from Mako. So we're going to be, uh, I've got some of them with little asterisks or stars next to them. Yeah, that's what we're doing tonight. All the ones with the little stars we're going to do. And I'm always open to suggestions. If you know of an awesome Mako combo and I have the glazes, well, I'll glaze it and we'll do it together. So a couple exciting things we got going on here at Clay Share. Oh, I need you to grab me something in a second. So um, we have got a couple announcements tonight. Well, you know we have our Mako giveaway. That is this fabulous 2020 stoneware glaze kit where you're getting 32 ounces of glaze. You get eight little jars of glaze in here. Some of them will change your life, I tell you. Look at this one. This is called Night Moth. Oh my goodness. That's all that's on this is just that glaze. It's amazing. Another one that I particularly love from this is called Muddy Waters. And here you go. This is Muddy Waters on top of lavender mist. Of course, you can use it by yourself, by itself. You get a little different combination. And then you get six other glazes in this little stoneware glaze kit. So we're giving away four of these. And to be eligible to win, all you have to do is enter. And to do so, you just go to clayshare.com and sign up for our emails. That's it. And if you're a premium member, guess what? Automatically entered. You don't have to do anything at all. We'll be announcing the winner next week. So one week from tonight at 5 p.m. Eastern time. So right now in one week. So mark your calendars. Seven days from now, people are going to be winning. Four of these. Four of them are going. And in it, you not only get the glazes, you get this really great little brochure that shows the glazes. I can actually give you a little sneaky peek of what you get for glazes in there. Look at those gorgeous colors. So good. So you get a combination of classic glazes, gloss glazes, crystal glazes. My personal favorite are crystal glazes and a matte glaze right here. Now to go along with this promo with Mako, we're working with Clayscapes Pottery and they are doing a 25% discount off of all Mako glazes for the month of July. So you get 25% off Mako's retail price. If you go to clayscapespottery.com, use the code explore 10 and you'll save a total of 25% off. Now, you only get eight glazes in here. So even if you win these eight glazes, I'm gonna show you some combos that aren't in here. So you might want these. And my understanding is you can use that code multiple times throughout the month. So if you order some today, and then you decide next week you want to order more, you can do that. And there will be a kiln opening this weekend. So everything I'm glazing, all these little cups we're glazing tonight, guess what? They're going to come out of the kiln this weekend and you'll get to see the results before the drawing of the winners. So you can still buy the glazes if you fall in love with them. We're going to stick that up there. So it's like see it before you buy it, right? So that's the awesome thing. The other thing I have to give you guys info on is I see everybody's coming in. Oh, I want to say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. I can see all your comments. Everybody on Facebook, everybody on YouTube, everybody on clayshare.com. I got you all right here. Welcome in. I'm so glad you're hanging out with me tonight. So we have a super secret 24 hour sale. And I need you to grab me something, Kev, under that box right there. Grab me one of the, that, what's under that box. So as you all know, we work with GR Pottery Forms. We love Jeff at GR Pottery Forms. And we're doing a super awesome 24 hour promo where you can save 20% off GR Pottery Forms from grpotteryforms.com. Just go there starting at 5 p.m. tonight. That's now, it's active now. So set your timers, 24 hours. You can get anything you want from the site is my understanding. And you can use it as many times as you want in this 24 hour period. The code is CLAYSHARE, all capital letters. That's it. Now this is the 13 by 17 platter form. I love this form. I have lots of other smaller forms. These plates were made with GR Pottery Forms. Lots of the things I make in my classes, I use GR Pottery Forms. So if you need to stock up on GR Pottery Forms, 
the next 24 hours are for you. Go do it. Get them now. Get them, get them before they're gone. <laughs> so that was an awesome um, surprise. Jeff and I have been talking the last few days, trying to get something together for everybody, uh, you know, a little summer sale. So 20% off. Use the ClayShare code, just capital letters ClayShare, and get them. Okay, so there's that. And we have, oh my goodness, one more exciting thing to share, and then we'll start glazing. So much going on over here in ClayShare land. So many awesome things. So we know that this month's giveaway for July is the Mako Glaze Pack, which is an awesome prize. But I have got in this box a secret. This is, the, this is actually the prizes. They're my demo version of the prizes. The people who win don't get these. They get brand new ones. But these are mine to demo with of next month's giveaway. There'll be four prizes. We're going to do one each week. So each week in August, there'll be a prize. And it's from Diamond Core Tools. That's right, you heard me, Diamond Core Tools. So there'll be four winners, one each week, and we're gonna have a promo code next month to go along with that. But I thought it would be fun before we started glazing to do a little unboxing so you all could see what is gonna be in this um, giveaway. So the prizes, like I said, will be announced on Wednesdays of each week next month. So instead of waiting the whole month to win, people are gonna win every week. Just, just gonna do it every week. Which I think will be really fun. We don't usually do it that way. We usually save it all to the very, very, very end. But this way, if there's one thing you wanna win and then you don't win it, but I, I hope you do win it. But if you don't win it, guess what? You could get it with the discount code. So that's the plan, right? Because I don't want anybody missing out and saying, I didn't win it, I was waiting because I thought I might win and then I didn't win and then I missed the, the discount code. And I'm trying to be careful because there's a lot of tape and this is a sharp knife. All right, show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show all of you. So how long will the Mako discount be valid on Clayscapes Pottery? Through the end of July. So through the end of the month. So if you don't win next Wednesday, you still get two more days, right? July goes a couple more days after that. So you got some time. No worries. All right. So I don't remember what order the prizes are going to happen. I just have the prizes here from Diamond Core Tools. So, and they're going to be in an assortment, so you won't get just one thing. Each week when the person wins, they'll get a little bundle of things. So we have one of Diamond Core Tools Shrink Rule, right here, Shrink Ruler. These are fabulous. We have got three of their trimming tools. These are so nice. I've demoed these before. These are so sweet. You know, I already got a set of these. Maybe I won't use these and I'll give these away too and we'll have two winners. What? Shh. We'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk. Maybe there can be two winners of the trimming tool set. Let's wait and see. If you're all good, I'll do two prizes. And then we've got a couple of the Diamond Core Tools carving tools. This is the oh, the this is the L3. This is the small football, large football, and this is the little I think it's the P12 little carving tool, straight carving tool. This is their little disc that they have, the little spinning disc. That's a great tool. A bunch of Diamond Core Tools sanding pads. I love these. I use these all the time. I actually just used some earlier to wet sand my glaze wear. So so will you be able to get the prizes in the UK? All of the prizes, the shipping is covered by the manufacturer. Um, a lot of times the issue we have is the manufacturer won't ship outside of the US and the people who win don't wanna play, pay the tariffs. So it's not so much the shipping, it's just there's a tariff charge. And we wanna make sure that you all can get your prizes. So I will talk to Diamond Core Tools, but most of the times it's within the US, yeah. And then the other little thing I got in here, Let's see if I can slide this out, which this is an amazing prize, is one of their grinding discs right here, already mounted to a bat. Look at that, one of their little grinding discs. These are so good for grinding off glaze. Just a little PSA, never grind glaze dry, always grind it wet. Always wet grind, wet sand, wet grind, always. 
So that's the prizes. There'll be four of them. And uh, I'll give you more details as we get closer. That means next Wednesday, I'll give you more details. But tonight, we're glazing with Mako. You just bought some two days ago, Kim. Guess what, honey? Don't be sad. Here's the thing. You can never have too many carving or trimming tools. You can't. Never, never, never. So if you win, rejoice, because now you've got extras, right? Don't be sad. Because I tell you, at some point, you'll want to buy more. And if you have extras, you'll be all set, right? All right, I'm going to put these away. Sit them off to the side here. And we're going to glaze. We're going to get to the glaze part. Okay, so let me show you some of my favorite Mako combos, and then I will actually apply the glazes. So you just bought some today. I know, Lori, I saw Diamond Core Tools is having a big sale right now. And if you hear about it from me, just let them know you heard about it from me. I don't get anything from it, but they like to track and find out where people are coming from. You know, we always want to know where people are finding out about things. I love to know where people find out about Clay Share from the first time. I'm sure Diamond Core Tools would love to find out that you heard about their tools from me. So just be sure to let them know if that's the case. If you're getting, if you're getting some tools and you heard about it on here, let them know. What that does is it also helps um, sponsors know that our audience has a demand for those products and then they want to sponsor more giveaways and that way you potentially can win more tools and get more discounts. That's how this all works. Can the sample pack of the 2020 Mako glazes be purchased? They were, yeah, I bought one uh, when they first came out. I believe you can. Uh, check out makocolors.com though. That won't be available through Clayscapes and I don't know if you can get a discount on it. So yes, you can get the sample pack, but it might just be Mako's price. Kev, can we reach out to Todd at Mako and find out if people can purchase their, their stoneware kits? We will check for you. We'll look into that. Yeah, I can actually just look in. Yeah, and I see there's a few people asking, what's my favorite diamond core tool? Well, I love the, P, the L3 and the P1. So the L3 is a diamond stylus tool for carving. I love it for Scrifido. I love it for Mishima. Um, I also love the P1, which is a really nice carving tool. And then I just discovered that P12, and I'm loving that too. So that's, that's a great one. So I want to show you some combos here that, oh, Cassandra checked. She says Mako still has the glaze combo for $20 plus five shipping. So for $25, you can buy one of the stoneware glaze kits. Mm -hmm. So you can get it. That's awesome. The L3 is your favorite too. Me and you, Mickey, me and you, right there. We're in the same place. Is the L3 near you by chance? Well, uh, that was the one I pulled out out of, the, out of the box. I have one, hold on, if I can reach over here to my stash of diamond core tools. So I have the L3 over here, P9, P12, uh, that's not it. I don't have the, I have to grab the box. Hold on. See, you all making me work already tonight. All right, the L3, and you can go to diamondcoretools.com and see the L3, which will actually probably let you see it better. But this is it. It's called the small football, large football. It's double-ended. See if I get my face out of here, it might focus on the tool. And you can see that right there. There it is. This is my favorite. Now, sometimes they have different colored grips. So if you get one and your grip is not this color, don't panic. It's just packaging, so don't worry about it. I have one that's um, black and white zebra stripes is my grip. So it, it doesn't really matter. It's just what they have, I guess, available for packaging at the time. So don't worry about it. All right. So let's show you some Mako glazes, and then we're going to go ahead and do the glazing. And you can still get the 2019 pack as well from Glazer Ceramics. Oh, then do that. So the Mako 2019 glaze kit had some of my favorite glazes ever in it. Check that out. It looks like Glazer, G-L-A-S-E-R, ceramics. You might have to just search on Google for that information, but you can find that out. All right. How about we give away each tool? That way more winners. Well, Patty, 
The giveaway prizes were actually set up by Diamond Core Tools. They're the ones who dictate that, so they're willing to do four prizes, and each prize is a bundle, and that's how that works. So it wouldn't be, um, it, it would be disrespectful for me to break up their prize pack, I feel, and give away individuals. But here's the thing, if you all love it so much and you love the prizes, it means we can get Diamond Core Tool to come back again. So it's just, we'll, we'll see. This is, this is the first time we've had them on as a full sponsor of a month. And I think it's gonna be really fun because next month I'll be doing a lot of carving and inlay and trimming and just using Diamond Core products. So you get to see how everything works and how you can use them in your own studio. All right, so I'm gonna show you the Night Moth again. This glaze is gorgeous. This is one of my favorite, favorite Mako glazes. And I wanna show you an older glaze from Mako called Galaxy. So you can see this one too. And I wanna show you them side by side because I feel like a lot of times you might think they're the same. They're not at all. They're completely different. The Galaxy is a gray base with crystalline blooms that have a bit of tan, a bit of light blue, and a tiny bit of like purpley pink. And the Night Moth is in a black base, so it's a really much darker. And then it has greens and tans and I think a little rust in there and a little bit of blue as well. So they have little crystal blooms in it. So they're, they're slightly different from each other, but they're some of my favorite glazes. The Night Moth is in that 2020 kit. Here's Night Moth on a mug. Look at that mug. This is just one glaze. This, this isn't like a layered, no, no. One glaze, one glaze does it all. So the way I apply it, and we'll do some application in a minute, two coats top to bottom, and then a third coat on the rim, a little heavier, and that allows the crystals to build up and run, and it gives you some really nice glaze effects. So that's one of my favorite glazes is the Night Moth. And then I showed you this, I've showed this many times because it's gorgeous. This is Lavender Mist, two coats on the entire mug, and then Muddy Waters, two coats on the entire mug right here. I love this combo, and you can see that purple just peeking out under the bottom. Now, Muddy Waters is also a crystal glaze. It's one of their new ones, and it's an interesting glaze because when you put Muddy Waters on by itself, as it is here in this mug, it's much darker. It's more earth tones with a bit of blue breaking, and then I put Mako Dark Flux on top. That's the stuff that looks like chocolate syrup that's running down the side, so you can kind of see when you put the Muddy Waters on top of another glaze, it really brightens it up. So we're gonna, use, we're gonna use Muddy Waters a bit tonight. We're also gonna be using Celadon Bloom. Now this is just two glazes. Celadon Bloom on the outside, two good coats, and then Mako's Light Flux on top. And I call this my Beach House Mug right here. That's what I call this, the Beach House Mug. And I, and I always have to say, I just have to have a house to put it in. <laughs> it never gets old. <laughs> a house to wrap around my mug, exactly. And this is my daughter's current favorite glaze. So I made her a ramen bowl for her ramen noodles. Here's her bowl. We're gonna glaze this bowl to match this mug because technically this mug's hers. I snatched it to show you guys. Even though it's my beach house mug, my dream mug, she took it. This is how life is, right? Those of you with children or family members who love pottery, you know what I'm talking about. You glaze something, it comes out of the kiln, and they love it, and you can't say no. You say, oh, I want you to have it, even if it's your favorite thing. And that's totally what happened with this mug right here. That's what happened with that. And then I got a couple other combos I'm gonna share with you. This right here is frosted lemon. That's that yellow, inside and out two coats, blue hydrangea, two thirds of the way down, two coats, and then light flux on the top. And I've, I've shared this before. And if you do the same thing, yeah, raspberry mist with muddy waters on top, that's on my list. Check out my list. Do you see all the little scribbles and all that little writing? That's my glaze map, my glaze plan but I have that on here, Muddy Waters on Raspberry Mist. I also have Muddy Waters on Frosted Lemon. I wanna try that. Muddy Waters on Aurora Green. Muddy Waters on Robin's Egg. Muddy Waters over Galaxy. And <laughs> Muddy Waters over Blue Splatterware. And 
last but not least, Muddy Waters over Fool's Gold. Is that enough? That's just one glaze going on top of all kinds of other glazes. And then I think we're going to do some winter wood because winter wood makes everything look good. Like everything you put on top of winter wood looks amazing. So I think we're going to do um, either melon or raspberry mist or lavender mist or capri blue or norse blue on top of winter wood. Or maybe solid on bloom. I don't know. But I have to stop talking and start glazing or we're never going to get anywhere. And for my Clay Share Premium members, you guys get an extra dose of me glazing tonight because in our private broadcast after this one ends, after the public one ends, we're doing more glazing. So it's just a big glaze-a-thon. Oh, let me just show you this too. This awesomeness right here. Look at this. So this is lavender mist with blue hydrangea on top. So lavender mist on the entire thing, blue hydrangea glazed to here, and then light flux here in the very center and then on the edge. And it creates this kind of uh, like aurora borealis sort of thing going down. It's amazing on this pierced bowl. I love it. I love it. I love that combo. I have not, I've not done this on a mug yet. I need to do this on a mug, but we got cups to glaze, so we'll do that. All right, winter wood is your go-to now, and raspberry mist is amazing. And raspberry mist with Mako's Dark Flux by just those two together is gorgeous as well. And raspberry mist is a glaze. If you only put two light coats on, you can put it on texture and you don't lose your texture. So it's another one for that. Same with the lavender mist, that if you go light with the lavender mist, you won't lose your texture. And a lot of people are always asking, what glazes can I use um, to highlight texture? Now here's one, another one that's just a single glaze right here. This is Lime Shower. So if you like really bright colors, this one's a great one. It's the bright lime green with white and dark green crystals and blooms in it. It's really pretty. And I, I have a, I'll show you guys tomorrow in a post what I keep in this one. You'll never guess what I keep in this magic shaker. So these are actually herb or salt and pepper shakers but that's not what I keep in this one. And you guys have to guess. And if somebody actually guesses it right, I'll give you this. If you guess right, but you'll have to stay tuned to my post tomorrow to see what it is. I don't even know what you keep in He doesn't even know. Nobody knows. It's a secret. Kevin doesn't know what I keep in that. I'm not even going to shake it so you can't see. <laughs> Nobody will ever guess what I keep in it. Ever. Ever. You saw the beach house mug and you immediately thought of the beach, Lori. It is. It's the beach house mug. So let's start. The first combo I want to do tonight for you all is going to be the Muddy Waters. I think we're going to put it on over Fool's Gold. Muddy Waters on Fool's Gold. Now, Fool's Gold is one of the ones I believe it came as a sample in 2019's glaze kit. I have it over here. So I believe Fool's Gold was in 2019. It might have been in 2018. Um, so every year I buy a bunch of the small kits when they come out because they usually do a discount code and you can save. And I like to test the glazes out and it's such a good deal. So we got Fool's Gold and Muddy Waters. And I have to check to see if I have it up top here or is it down here? I've got a stash of glazes down here as you might've figured out because I didn't want to be walking all over the studio to find everything. I wanted to have it right here. And could I not have Muddy Waters here with me? Maybe I don't. I'm gonna have to go looking. I'm going to have to fetch, have somebody fetch muddy waters for me. <clears throat> so this is my little glaze stash I got back here. <laughs> Look. So are the crystal bloom glazes safe to use on dinnerware? Mako client has it listed if they're food safe, and the ones that I use are. They do suggest you don't have too many crystals uh, on areas where food's going to come in contact, but they are. So I thought I had muddy waters out already, but... I have both, but um, give me the little one. That'll work. So I can put this down. The little one will be fine. But if you can find the big one, it would be better because the crystals will be dispersed better. All right, so we're going to start with Fool's Gold, two coats. So my, my go-to with pretty much all of Mako glazes is two coats of the glaze. And then, yay, he found it. He found my big pint of it two coats of the bottom glaze, and then usually two coats of the top glaze. Sometimes I do the entire thing two coats, but you have to watch for running. So usually I like to do two coats of the bottom glaze, 
top glaze, one coat, mm, five sixths of the way down, and then the second coat, three quarters of the way down. That way if it runs and flexes, you don't have to worry about it melting and sticking to your kiln shelf. So I have got my glaze test and notebook. So this is where I keep track of all the glazing I do because right now I might glaze four cups during this broadcast and I'll remember what those combos are. But by the time I unload my kiln, either Saturday or Sunday, I'll have forgotten. So I have to write everything down and I keep it in here. So for this glaze firing, we're gonna do a cup and I'm just gonna write cup one and we're gonna do fool's gold. And I think we can switch to the overhead camera for everybody um, so you all can see. That way you can really see what I'm working on. Fool's gold times two. So I always put the first glaze in my notes. I write that first. So I'll write fool's gold because that's the first glaze you apply. It just makes more sense for me. Times two, so I know I'm putting two coats on and then we're gonna do muddy waters. And I'm gonna do times two. I'm only gonna do three quarters uh, from top. So that means I'm gonna apply it three quarters of the way down from the top, two coats. That works. I think that'll be a good combination. And this is what I'll do and by the time I'm done with my glazing, I'll have both sides filled up and I will have a kiln full of pots. Um, you know, some past examples of my glaze notes, it depends how much of a hurry I'm in, how neat they can be. So this one on May 15th, you know, got a couple pages of glaze information. And on it, I also write cone I fired to, the speed, if I did a preheat in it, if I did a hold, if there's a cone offset, and the time it took and the top temperature it got. And then if there's any other notes that I need as far as the firing goes, I write them in here. So this works as my glazing log and as my kiln firing log. So it's, it's like a two for one. Gives you all the information you need. So if you make 10 coffee mugs in my style, how do you tell the difference when you are recording the glazes? So for me, I, I research the glazes before I use them. I know what the colors should look similar to. So I use that reference information to know what it is. I don't really like writing number one on the bottom of my cups. I don't wanna write a number or anything on here. Now, if you wanted to start stamping your pieces with an inventory number, starting with one, and then just going to infinity, you could do that. And then that way you would have a number for recording. It's just, I don't wanna put a number on here. And for me, I'm gonna write down the glazes the cups, I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I actually have a 10th one over there. So I'll have 10 cups, 10 different glaze combos, but they're gonna be drastically different. Uh, I shouldn't have a problem telling them apart. Usually it's not an issue, but um, it's a very good question and how you record things is a very personal thing. So if you feel like it's gonna be hard for you to tell apart what two glazes might be, you might wanna make a little note somewhere in the piece. For me, I know I'm gonna have 10 cups. I'm also gonna have two ramen bowls, two different shapes. This is my daughter Riley's ramen bowl, and this is my other daughter Leanne's ramen bowl. You see how they're different? So I can write Riley's bowl, Leanne's bowl. I'll know what glaze, I'll know what one they are. And if I forget, my children will certainly remember. They won't let me forget. So I try to find identifying things. And for me, there's, even though there's a series of cups you know, the two cups look almost identical to each other. There's little differences, right? So there's, sometimes I'll say fatter cup or shorter cup or mug with a bigger handle, that kind of thing. And that's a good way for you to differentiate what you have going there for a shape. Okay, let's do that. Fool's, fool's gold, fool's gold, two coats. And I'm gonna put the two coats on the inside and on the outside. So usually the base glaze I'm using will also be the glaze I'll use on the inside of a piece. But sometimes I will dip and pour a liner glaze, which is just a simple glaze, holds up really well for food wear, dinner wear, completely food safe, right? And um, will look nice with everything, and it's not as expensive. Like the crystal glazes, you know, some of these glazes, they can get a little pricey. So I like to use often a simpler glaze on the inside. But for this demo, we're gonna do fool's gold inside and out. 
Please repeat the diamond core tool numbers. So that was the L3 diamond stylus tool and the P1, the um, carving tool, although I've been using the P12 a lot lately. So for glazing, can you take that for me, hon? Mm -hmm. um, Mako makes these fan brushes and this is a number eight soft fan brush. I love these right here. And they have other sizes. I have some sixes. I have a little guy here. I don't know what this little one is. Number four. So it's a number four. And I love these because they really soak up a lot of glaze. Now I use other brushes, but I have found that the brushes I like to use might be harder for some people to find. So the Mako fan brush, any place that sells Mako um, brush supplies will have these. So let's just dig into our Fool's Gold. Fool's Gold is, um, if you're not familiar with Mako glazes, but you are familiar with Amico glazes, it's kind of like cosmic tea dust, if that helps you, you know. Some people are new to Mako. I know I am a uh, only been using Mako the last few years and really just heavily this year. So we're gonna start in the bottom. I've already wiped these off inside and out with a damp clean sponge. And if there was any areas that had rough spots, I took and wetted down my sanding sponge and then I sanded that area and wet wiped it clean. So I never dry sand, I always wet sand because I don't want to put any of that dust up in the air and breathe it. Oh, you can actually see there's sparkles in the glaze. So two coats, I did my first coat, and I'm gonna go right in and do the second coat. First coat, you notice I started at the bottom and went up. Second coat, I'm starting at the top and working my way down. That's just because the glaze always seems to be a little thicker at the bottom, it pools down there. So if you start at the top, as it starts to run down, you can catch it and grab it and spread it out more evenly. So that's the outside. So this one has to dry. It's gonna take it a minute to dry. So what I'm gonna do is, this is my little, little trick for you all. When I'm glazing a bunch of things and I'm brushing on glaze, even if I'm dipping and pouring glazes, I don't wanna get confused. I wanna know what I have for glazes going. So I will take a little card and I will write fool's gold two and then on top Muddy Waters, just MW2. So I have this right here as a little tag, and I'm just gonna cut this out. And what I do is sometimes I will save these because this combo might be so amazing, I'm gonna use it again. And I have a little dish of them, and I can just grab my little tags out. But this is gonna sit with this off to the side, just like this. And if I am confused about where I am, I can check off what I'm doing. So right now it says fool's gold times two, muddy waters times two. Well, I know I've done the inside. I know that's finished. I've done nothing on the outside. After I do the outside two coats, I'll check off fool's gold. And then when I do muddy waters, when I do one coat, I might check that off and write X1. And then when I do the second, I'll just put this away. So this is a great little way to keep track of, of what you're doing. So that's just gonna sit off to the side along with the glaze and actually the brush I'm just going to leave sitting in the top because I have multiple brushes and I don't want to switch brushes since I do plan to use um, that fool's gold I'm hoping on another piece. Okay, let's pick another color combo. So I'm going to do at least two. You just got your, your GR Pottery Forms, Lisa. Woohoo! I know, 20% off for 24 hours. That's an awesome deal. So we're gonna do next, what do you all think? I thought it would be really fun. I have Aurora Green over Capri Blue. Oh, do we wanna do more Muddy Waters? Or do you wanna do, let's do Winterwood. Wanna do Capri Blue on Winterwood? What do you guys think? Oh, so Kelly takes pictures of her glaze pieces before firing with your notebook in the background. Kelly, I do the same thing. I'll take a picture, not with my notebook, but I definitely take a photo of the piece so that I have a reference so I can do before and after. I also videotape a lot of my glaze applications, which you might have seen if you follow me on Instagram and on Facebook. You'll see I actually show you how I apply it in a very speeded up little video so you can see the multiple coats going on. 
And for me, that's a really good reference because I can go and view my own little videos and see what I did. A makeup brush like that, yeah, Julia, a makeup brush would work as well. Yeah, that's great. So great suggestion from Kelly. Take photos of your pieces with your notebook behind it so you know what you did. And Julia says using makeup brushes is a great option too for applying your glaze. All right, let me put this where you all can see from above. And the three glazes on the pierced plate mark. So if you want to actually see, I, I did a class on making this pierced bowl. It's actually a pierced bowl, but you can make it into a plate. And that class is on clayshare.com. There's the back, there's the front. This is lavender mist, blue hydrangea, and light flux, all from Mako, all of them. Great combo, love it. All right, did we pick? Did y'all pick glazes for me or am I just gonna go do what I want? Winter wood with lavender mist. All right, let's do it. Winter wood, lavender mist. See how easy I am? I am just like, what do you wanna see on a pot? I'll glaze it for you. And then we will unload it. Um, I'm hoping to get this all done tomorrow so we can have a Saturday kiln opening but it might not be till Sunday. We'll see. So we're gonna do the same thing. Now winter wood has a lot of crystals in it and I don't really wanna stir the crystals up too much if I'm gonna be using it inside. I wanna let the crystals be on the bottom and I'm just gonna go from the top. And this is talking about the food safety issue. Now the crystals will probably be fine, but they're inside this cup. You're not really gonna see them so much because it'll have a liquid in there, right? So I'm gonna save all my crystals for the outside. So I'm just brushing it up. And I actually have a brushing on glaze class where I show you all how to brush glazes, although I use a different company's glaze in that class. And I use some different brushes because I wasn't using this brush at the time because the class is three years old, but it's still very good as far as information and as a reference. All right, so two coats on the inside I don't feel the need to put more than two coats on the inside of a cup. I feel like that's, that's enough. All right, we're going to scoot this to the side. Because I'm only really going to probably glaze a couple things tonight, I'm going to not do a card for this. I know. Can you believe it? Not doing it. You got goat hair brushes at the Hobby Lobby, and they hold a lot of glaze too. See? So there's lots of options. So for glazing the cup, I like to turn it over. You know, once this is dry, this is probably not gonna go anywhere. I don't have to worry about sitting it upside down and crumbling the glaze off. But if you're worried, you know my little gripper pad that I taught you all how to make, which is a free class? You can make this for free. Guess what? Just sit it on your gripper pad and you don't have to worry about marring up the surface. And these gripper pads, you can just wash off. So you can cover them with glaze and you can just wash them off. They're just made from the shelf liner material you get for your cabinets. And I'm just gonna spin and apply the glaze as I'm spinning. And this does a really good job of getting a nice even application. And I like, if there's any brush strokes at all, I just like how they're going around the cup. I just like the way that looks. And I would do the same thing on a hand-built cup as I would on a wheel thrown cup, it wouldn't matter. So we're gonna flip this over and I'm gonna do that little bit on the top. That little band on the top there. So that's one coat, and you can actually see it's already dry, right? That first coat is already dry. How will I know which cup it is? Well, when they come out of the kiln, I'll be able to tell. <laughs> but also the glazes will look different as they dry, and I've done a lot of glazing in my career, so for me, I've, I've, learned, I've learned to recognize you know, what glazes can look like. Now when you're starting out, you might want to mark your pieces. As I mentioned a little earlier, you might want to find a way to put some sort of reference number on there, whether you write a little number on it or you stamp a number on every piece you make so you have a little inventory number on there so that way you can always reference that. And sometimes it's a process elimination for me. You know, I'll be able to eliminate what it's not based on how the finished pot looks. All right, so two good coats of winter wood on here. No, fool's gold, winter wood's the other one. This one's fool's gold. So fool's gold is an iron-based glaze. 
and it has little sparkles in it, which is mica. So it has a bit of mica in it. And I'm done with the fool's gold for now. Am I going to do anything else with fool's gold? No. Oh, galaxy on fool's gold. What do you guys think of galaxy on fool's gold? Hmm. Galaxy on fool's gold to me looks a lot like night moth. I think they're very, very similar. Let me clean off. Look, see how easy it is to clean your glaze off your little gripper pad? And it's off. So let's grab this one that has the winter wood on it. Let me clean my sponge. So now we're on the outside and I am going to stir it up a little more and get all those crystals up from the bottom. There's a lot of crystals down in there. You can see them in the brush. And let's just apply it. So a lot of times when you're using a glaze for the first time, uh, I do suggest you use it on a test piece. Maybe not a cup or something that took a long time for you to make, if cups take you a while to make. Maybe you use it on a little test tile. And test tiles we always mark with numbers. And so that's probably a better reference. I do have a glaze test tile class, and that one's really all about using Georgie's glazes, but you can apply that class to everything out there, to every glaze out there, because you're gonna wanna test your things, and you're gonna wanna see what it looks like, and glazes are expensive, and you don't wanna use your glaze all up, all up, and then find out you don't like that combo. I like the way it looks right now. You like the, so he likes the way this looks right now. He, he just let me, just that's the glaze, enjoy. No, we're, it'll look totally different. <laughs> but for me, um, this is what I do for a living. I make a lot of pots. I test a lot of glazes. So for me, it makes sense to use something like a cup as a test piece. I also use these extruded tubes. Kev, you wanna pull me some test tubes off the counter over there? So I use these test tubes and they are really easy to write on with a underglaze pencil or a little liner bottle you can write a number on these but these test tubes right here I could just apply a bit of glaze on the outside only and actually hun, I have finished ones in that bowl under the bag with candles this is how we store stuff the sponges bags of candle yeah white bag lift up test tubes find me a test tube any one of those will do <laughs> all right so this is a test tube. So this is what it looks like when it's done. So you get the idea, it does shrink, clay shrinks, right? So you can see what this glaze looks like. And on this one, I scratched in the surface Roman numerals when it was still wet. So I scratched 35, 36 actually, 36 is scratched in here. But now I don't scratch into the surface. I will actually write with an underglaze, underglaze pencil or with a little bottle like this with a needle tip I'll write so that way I can have a reference number and then I'll write that number in my notebook so this is what I do when I'm using glazes that I I've never used before when I'm making my own glazes when I'm testing glazes out glazes I'd have no idea what they're gonna look like now Mako has done an amazing job of providing me with this fabulous poster behind me that shows me all the glazes online resources for looking at tiles of what the glaze should look like so you know, using deduction, I can figure out what glaze it is if I have doubts. But for starting, first time using a glaze, might want to do some test tiles or test tubes. So I put another coat of the winter wood on. So we decided winter wood and lavender mist. Lavender mist is one of my favorite glazes. It just is. It's good under, it's good over. It's a really pretty glaze. It looks great on texture. And Lavender Mist with Mako Dark Flux on it looks great too. I haven't tried it with the Light Flux. Well, not by itself at least, but I bet it looks great. All right, so now I'm gonna clean this off. Set this one to the side. So that's the one we're doing the 
lavender mist on top of the winter wood. I'm just going to move the gripper pad away. Clean this off. All right, so fool's gold with muddy waters. So we're only going to put the muddy waters on the outside. And I said three quarters of the way down, right? Three quarters of the way down from the top is what we're doing. I'm going to use the fool's gold again, am I? Maybe. We're going to keep it out. I might use it again. Not 100% sure. I'm switching to the smaller four inch fan brush. We are getting a severe thunderstorm tonight. I just want everyone to know um, it started, it was supposed to start between five and six and go until sometime in the wee hours. So hopefully we won't lose power or internet, but you know, we are at nature's mercy here. I'm mixing this up. You love the test tubes. Yeah, Jane, the test tubes are fun and you just extrude them out. Now, I do have a really simple, quick way to make test tiles. Uh, I think in my test tile class, I show you how to do it from a slab. But it's a little different shape, right? The tubes are nice because they stand up in the kiln. You get this really nice vertical surface. You know, you get this really nice melt right here. You can actually see how a glaze is going to run and pool right here. That's a pretty glaze. I don't even know what glaze that is. That's a translucent glaze with cobalt that I made about 10 years ago. It's really pretty. <laughs> little, that's one of my own glazes, so um, I get a little sidetracked by the pretty glaze, right? <laughs> oh, the banding wheel is a Shimpo banding wheel. That's a great question. That's the one I'm using. And what I love about this is, look, I just, I gave it a little spin and look at it still go. It'll, it'll go forever. Yes. <laughs> Oh, Sherry, thank you. I know. Little Raina, she is so cute. We got a puppy on Saturday. Oh my gosh, she's eight weeks old. She's something else. And she's discovered she can bark. She has this cute little growly bark. Oh my goodness. Something else. So we're going three quarters of the way down for the first coat. And I'm just letting the brush do the work. You know, I load it up nicely. And I did go down the pot and then I kind of came back up. So honestly, it's like one and a half coats. And then we're gonna let this dry and we're gonna put another coat on top. So that's the fool's gold with muddy waters on top. And I have to give a huge shout out to one of our clay share members, Mr. Rich McNatt, who is killing it with the glaze samples he's been sharing of muddy waters. Rich has been putting muddy waters on just about every glaze out there, and I have not seen a bad version yet. Every one of them is amazing. So, Rich, you, you rock, buddy. You're the star of the week. I should have a clay sharer of the week. Rich, that's you. <laughs> clay, who, that's right. So, to be clay sharer of the week, just got to post some stuff and share, right? That's it. So we're going to do the lavender mist on top of, i got to figure out where I put it, lavender mist. There it is. Like It's like being Star Baker, exactly, for those of you who follow the um, Great British Baking Show. It's <laughs> so my, my lavender mist is new. I just got a new thing of it. So you have to bear with me while I open it. Oh, you have barred rock chicks the same age as mine who just started crowing. Oh, yours are crowing. So, Diana, i got to tell you all something about our chicks. We went and got chicks back in, was it May? Was it May we got chicks? I think it was May. Um, and we were supposed to be getting Dominique chicks. Just Dominique chicks. That's it. Well, it turns out <laughs> they're not. About Five of them are Dominique chicks, three are Bard Rocks or Bard Rock Dominique Crosses. They definitely are not 100% Dominique chicks. And I cannot tell males from females yet, but I'm really hoping they're all girls. <laughs> so I know two of them are girls. I can already tell. Two, two Bard Rocks are girls. One of the other Bard Rocks, my, my Emma, might be an Emmet. Yeah, that's how that goes. 
So lavender mist, we're gonna do two coats on top of the, hold on, I'm gonna turn it, muddy water, not muddy waters, winter wood. And I only wanna go, I think I'm only gonna do halfway down for this. I really wanna still see that winter wood. So we're gonna start at the top and we're just gonna apply. It's a little drippy, but I, I don't mind the mess. I make pots for a living. I like messy. You kind of have to. It's part of it's part of the joy of making, right? So there's our one coat. Now I have a couple banding wheels, and when I'm doing a big glazing session, I'll have two or three banding wheels set up. I actually have one, two, three, four, five banding wheels. Not all shimpo. I only have two shimpos, but I have other companies' banding wheels, and I'll set them up and I'll use them. Or when I'm Doing this, I'll have a little board, which I forgot to grab, but I'll have a little board here, and that way I can move the pot without touching the glaze, because I don't want to damage anything I've glazed already. So that's one coat of the lavender mist on top of the winter wood. And here's a rhyme. Everything looks good on winter wood. So anytime you are thinking about putting a glaze on top of winter wood, go ahead. If you're thinking about doing it, and I need to come up for something with muddy waters, because muddy waters looks good on top of everything. So it's like, um, gotta come up with a, a cool muddy waters saying, so we remember how awesome muddy waters is on top of everything. So how many chickens do I have, and how many eggs do I get per week, Jane? Well, my baby's chicks won't lay until November. Are you gonna answer that? I we, would. We have 16 hens that lay, but some of those are older and they're not necessarily laying. And a lot of them are four years old, so they only lay one egg every four days. That's how it works. When chickens are one year old, they lay an egg a day. Two, they lay an egg every second day. Three year olds lay an egg every third day and four every fourth day. So you get how it is. So when you have 16 hens, you're like, that's a lot of eggs each day. But in fact, there's only one egg per hen every four days. So that's four eggs a day, which seems like a lot, but I have two daughters that, you know, I could do a dozen eggs every day and they'd eat something from it. Well, that's from those girls. Just from those girls. The yeah. babies don't lay at all. They're not yet. Total right now, we're about eight eggs a day. Are we at eight eggs a day from those? So eight eggs a day, which is a decent amount of eggs. <laughs> and we do have friends that um, we, we provide eggs to. So we don't keep, we don't have to eat all the eggs ourselves. That would be a little difficult. But um, yes, yeah, so we have friends that, you know, we give our eggs to. And often I'll bake a lot, so I can use quite a bit of eggs sometimes. But it's good to like eggs if you have chickens. <laughs> it's a handy thing. And I'll, I'll tell you all something, and most people don't realize you do not need a rooster to get eggs. Eggs are part of the chicken's natural biological process. They lay them no matter what. So if you don't have a rooster, we didn't have a rooster for years and years. And the current rooster we have is a bantam. That means he's a quarter to a third the size of a full size hen. You say he's a third of the size of the hens? He's a third. He can't physically do the job. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> this is the deal. He's a tiny little rooster. He can't really get the job done. But he thinks he can. So. Um, none of our eggs are actually fertilized <laughs> because he, you know, but he's a sweetheart. All right, we're going to do this next coat of the muddy waters. And I'm, I'm holding the cup up a bit because I really want to see how the glaze is going to look. And I'm kind of wiggling my brush a bit. And that, believe it or not, will affect, do you see how I'm wiggling? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. That can affect how the glaze will look on the finished piece. Like you might see some more of a waviness in there. Not necessarily brush strokes, but you definitely can see a little movement in there. And that's it. So this one is the fool's gold that we did. And we put on top the muddy waters. That's gonna be amazing. All right, so that one can go to the side and finish drying, right? Put that over here. We'll see you Saturday, hopefully. And then now we're gonna switch over to the lavender mist on the winter wood. And you can see it's not, not quite dry yet. I'd really like to wait for it to be completely dry. And I get asked a lot about, does it make a difference? Well, 
It kind of does. You want it to be 100% dry so you can make sure you get a nice even coverage. A little, a little tacky like this, sometimes you can get away with it. So it's just something to think about. So James, you need to send me examples of muddy, muddy water. <laughs> Did the, don't worry about the all caps, that happens. You know. <laughs> Uh, hi, hi. Yeah, what breed puppy did we get? We got a, so it's a DDR German Shepherd or called an East German Shepherd, which is different than the American German Shepherd. They are bigger boned. They are a heavier dog. They are usually darker in coat color. They're really bred for service, bred to be used by the military and police, and also for um, service dogs. So we'll be training her to be a service dog for our daughter. That's the reason we went with this breed. And this breed also doesn't have as many health issues as the American German Shepherd because it's not bred as a show dog, it's bred as a working dog. So it doesn't have the hip issues and it doesn't have as high a rate of cancer as other German Shepherds might. So that's why we went with this dog and she um, is bred from a line of service dogs, and we got the smartest puppy in the litter. So watch out, because smart puppies mean a lot of work. But I've trained many dogs, and uh, you know we, we're looking forward to, to seeing her grow and become an amazing service dog, and already we love her so much. Like we just, we've totally fallen in love with her. I mean, how can you not? She's a 30 pound, eight week old dog. She's gonna be upwards of 80 pounds, maybe a little more when she's full grown. So she'll be a good sized, big dog. She's like a little bear cub right now. He's not oh, about, so Cynthia's asking about my rooster being little. Sometimes they have a little complex and they're mean. He's not, we have cuddled him since he was two days old. He's a love, that one. I think, do we have time to do, where are we at? We don't have time to do another one. I'm sad, but in the private broadcast, we will. So what do we do tonight? Well, we talked about the Mako giveaway. Remember, sign up for the emails on clayshare.com and you can be entered in winning one of the four stoneware glaze kits. Plus we have the awesome deal with clayscapespottery.com. So you can save 25% off retail price on Mako glazes between now and the end of month. We have the 24 hour GR pottery sale that started at five tonight. Use the code clayshare all capitals, on grpottery.com. I think it's grpotteryforms.com. It's on their website. And you can save 20% off their forms. And then Diamond Core Tools, we had the unboxing showing you the, the prizes for next month's giveaway. And I know we plan to do four prizes, one each week. I might, I might be able to find a way to get an extra prize or two in there. We'll see. If I've got doubles of things, I'll give up my own so you guys can have extras. We'll see what I can do for you guys. <laughs> All right. so. Let's see, any other questions? So my mom says she's in the market for a new handleless coffee cup. All right, mama, you know what? There's gonna be a kiln opening this weekend, so come watch the kiln opening, and you all can see not just these two cups we did tonight, which was the Fool's Gold with the Muddy Waters. That's this one drying over here. See what, this, this is gonna look so different. You have no idea how amazing that's gonna be. I have an idea. You might have an idea. I don't know. And then this one, which is the winter wood with lavender mist. So you have to come back to see that, what that looks like. I'm going to be glazing the rest of this evening and all day tomorrow. If I can get this glazing done, there'll be a kiln opening Saturday. If it takes me another day, a third day to glaze, then there'll be a kiln opening Sunday. I will post as soon as I push the button for the glaze kiln to start, I will post the event for when the kiln opening is gonna happen, so you guys will know. So if I start it Thursday night, you get a kiln opening Saturday. If I start it Friday night, you get a kiln opening Sunday. It just depends how much work I can get done in a in, um, 16 hour day tomorrow. <laughs> all right, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I will catch you all next week when we give away the Mako glazes, and be sure to stay tuned for the kiln opening with all the awesome new glaze combos we're doing tonight. And my premium members, I will see you at 6.15. So just in a few minutes and we'll do more glazing and I'll take glaze requests. Good night, everybody.